Good afternoon. Welcome to everyone live and online. We are so glad that we can all be here and worshiping our Lord this day as we continue to celebrate the season of Easter. Just a brief prayer request. We have a member, Lee Morgans, who is in the hospital today with some leg blood clots, so we want to keep him in prayer during our prayers today and just in general as well. I think he's doing fine, but we still want to keep him in prayer for that. Also, congrats to the congregation for your generosity for the Dig Deep Water Project, the Navajo Water Project that we had through the season of Lent. We raised a total of $3,160 that goes directly 100% for that program. So thank you so much to all the members of Holy Trinity and everyone who gave and were a part of that. And so speaking of generosity, we also have a member, Jeff Fisher, who wants to share a generosity story with us about our church, the community, and just all the synergy that we have together. Hi, Jeff Fisher with the Bible on Tap group. Just reaching out and a thank you to all the members of Holy Trinity. Uh, recent generosity um, with our BOT group, uh, providing some funds to the youth group several uh, weeks ago. In turn, uh, we did some giving back. Uh, thank you to all the BOT members who came to Hawks Grill in Roswell to uh, do a fundraiser. Uh, the dinner proceeds of about 40 people that attended, uh, socially distanced. Uh, we gave back 15% of the proceeds to give to the BOT. Um, and that uh, venture was so well received by our staff. The service got the tips. The restaurant, uh, it helps keep the restaurant afloat during these very, very challenging times. Um, words enough can't express um, the generosity that's just been kind of a circle, uh, paying it forward, as one talks about. So beyond the money, the, the fellowship and faith and the love uh, within Jesus Christ was amazing um, on all levels. So thank you very much. Generosity um, well received and also given back. Thank you. And we also want to say thanks to our Bible on Tap men's group, too. They've been so generous in so many ways. I believe they will even be helping to fund a, an upcoming year-long stewardship program, too. So there's so many things the Bible on Tap group has done. So we are just thankful for that. Also, for those joining us live, please join us in the singing of all the hymns, the songs. We are um, just ready to be in worship together. For those in person here, please join us for the chorus. So we still have some safe distancing with that. And I know we want to be able to sing all of it. Remember, there are a lot of Lutheran churches here in the area that aren't singing anything. And we're stepping out beyond that recommendation too. But we believe we're still doing so very safely. So when you see chorus on there, jump in with us, okay? Great, and with that, let us begin with our opening song. Jesus, let you
Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are so thankful that this is the day that you have made and that we should rejoice in it. And we choose today, Lord, to rejoice in what you provided for us and the blessings and the love and the grace and the guidance and the wisdom and the direction in our lives. We, we rejoice in all that you are doing, but we also rejoice in who you are to us. You are our King. To you be the glory. In Jesus' name, as we worship and praise you tonight. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together as we're able for our call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. confess our sins to God and with each other. God of mercy and love, forgive us for turning away from you, for putting other things first in our lives, for the things we've done and the things we've left undone, for not loving you with all our hearts or our neighbors as ourselves. Heal us, forgive us, and strengthen us to walk in the light of your love again. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. In his name, receive the good news that you and all who turn back to God are forgiven, blessed, and renewed to live and love again. Amen. Please be seated.
At this time we continue with our offerings. We remember from the scripture tonight, which we're going to hear in just a moment, that this whole message, this Easter message, was that Jesus was given to die for us and raise, be raised from the dead on that third day. And it was for the repentance and forgiveness of sins. It also is for everlasting life. So as we think about offerings in this offering time, we remember that everything we have, everything that we are, is an incredible gift of God, paid through that blood of Christ and the cross for us. So with thanksgiving and joy, we give back a portion of what God has first given us. We receive our tithes and our offerings. Tonight's reading is from Luke chapter 24. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands, look at my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in the joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering. He said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are the witness of these things. Thus ends the reading. As we get started too with this, there's a little something you've got to help me out with. You've got to finish the line for me, okay? It's a something strange in the neighborhood. Who are you going to call? Thank you. Yes, you got it. Great. So the title of the sermon is Ghostbuster for today. And we'll get a little more to that in a moment. But I'm just curious, since the the gospel today deals with the idea of a ghost and the disciples thinking they'd seen a ghost. How many people here are willing to say that they've seen something or experienced something a little bit paranormal that you have no idea for sure about what happened? Any, anyone willing to admit that? Maybe a couple. I've had something myself, so I'm going to see if somebody else has too. And this was when Dina and I were living in Oregon, and uh, we were in the Portland area in Tigard, Oregon. And we've been in the house for about a year. And all, all this stuff happened in our master bedroom. Don't know why, I just did. And so we're in the master bedroom, and we have these little end tables at the end of the bed, little corner kind of tables, and they're more kind of old-fashioned. They were hand me down there to kind of have the, um, the face plates, the metal plates on one side and the metal handles on the other. So when you, when you pull them open, you can kind of clink back and forth with them sometimes. So sometimes we'd be lying at night, 
And suddenly both sides would go clink, 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 just by themselves. <laughs> this is before we had kids, anything else, just, just totally by themselves. So the first thing I thought what this might be was not a ghost or anything like that. I figured it's probably seismic activity. We're in the Pacific Northwest now. You know, when we got our house, I remember seeing with the, um, from, the, um, from the inspector about the braces underneath the house and how they look to be able to withstand uh, you know, seismic activity, so I figured maybe it's just seismic activity, but, but each of the times this happened, we never heard any reports of an earthquake, and there didn't seem to be anything else going on anywhere else in the house shaking or that we felt either, just, just there. And so I, then I began to wonder, well, we also had some earth moving equipment that was just down the street. There was another neighborhood being built and constructed, and maybe it was some of the earth moving, because every now and then you could kind of sense a little bit of something that would really move a lot of earth at one time, but that was during the day, and they never shook when that happened. And this, of course, is at night, and there was no activity going on there at night either. So that kind of ruled that out as well. And so then it got to be the case where, um, you know, oftentimes I might have been a, a awake a little longer than Dina. She'd already been asleep, and so it's like, clink, 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 clink. <laughs> I'm, I'm there awake. I'm like, Dina, Dina, wake up. Listen, nothing. I did it again, same thing, nothing. And then we found out over time Every single time one of us spoke out or made any kind of sudden movement, it would just stop right then. Well, that didn't seem, I mean, the first time or two, it could have been coincidence. It was seismic activity or something else, and it just happened to be done the same time we started speaking. But on multiple, multiple occasions, every single time when we started to speak out loud, it would stop. So literally, we would kind of just wait and be really quiet in bed. And we even got little, you know, sign language gestures, and we'd go tap, tap, tap on, the, you know, their shoulders without saying anything if it was if it was happening, and then we'd just listen, and just try to just try to figure out what it was. And uh, so it would keep going in that case if we were just kind of quiet in the bed, tap, 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 clink, 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 just keep on going for minutes, minutes on end. And uh, so one of the times, actually several times. I decided I'm going to try to catch whatever this is because there's some kind of action doing, you know, it's not just moving myself, something is moving it. So I would sleep on the edge of the bed and wait. And then if it started clinking, I would just all of a sudden go <sighs> and grab at the handle <laughs> as fast as I could. And I never got anything. But the weirdest thing was going from clink, 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 clink. And as soon as I tried to grab, not just that one stopped, but the other one would stop too at the very same time. So it was really just kind of bizarre. So I'll, I'll let you think, you know, what you want to make of the clinking of that. There were other things that happened too, but that was just one thing. Needless to say, I eventually had prayer in every single one of the rooms in that house and had kind of an exercising of sorts. With uh, I have really naive, childlike faith and believe very, very much in the power of God and that God has power over all things material and spirit. Um, so by the way, if you have anything going on in your neighborhood, <laughs> uh, I'm glad to come there too. It totally stopped after that. I have had a member or two of the church as well who have asked me to come in, which I have. I'll go to anybody's attic. I'll go to a basement. I'll go to a, a graveyard, wherever it might be. It doesn't, but, but I am not the Ghostbuster in the story. I'm just the vessel. The Ghostbuster is the Lord. 100.0% of my childlike absolute faith with this comes from knowing and trusting that God is there in our midst and that God is the God of everything. And so our Lord is the true ghost buster. And it's interesting as we look back to the gospel today too, that the disciples talk so matter of fact about a ghost in, in, the, in the gospel lessons written. It's not that, well, and they thought they saw an apparition, which is their thinking of somebody who might have still been there after death. And, you know, there's no explanation at all. It's just a matter of fact. They just thought they were seeing a ghost, which to me says, even back in the time of Christ, it was kind of common thought, common knowledge, it was normal to think of a possibility of a ghost. And looking back and doing some research, actually looking back at ancient Egyptian uh, and other civilizations, even several thousand years before the time of Christ, it was also seemed to be fairly commonplace, the idea of this. So, what if there really were ghosts? But even more than that, what about our fears? And what about our griefs? And what about all the other things that at times can haunt us? Because if we're talking about maybe an apparition or something, there might be a few of us who thought maybe we've seen some semblance of something. But if we're talking about those emotions that grip us with fear, 
our griefs, our pains, the old anger that's unresolved, all those things, many of us have those things that do haunt us and that we carry with us. And these symbolic ghosts flood us at times emotionally, and we can seem startled or terrified just in the same way that the disciples were startled and terrified seeing Jesus, thinking that they were seeing a ghost. It's very wise what Jesus first says. Too. Do you guys remember in the, in the scripture the very first thing Jesus says? Even before they're startled and they're terrified, the very first words are, peace be with you. Because our Lord knows our tendency to get very overwhelmed, to get terrified, to get afraid, especially of the unknown, and to wonder what's going to happen, and to have a hard time thinking then once we get flooded. So the very first things he says are, peace be with you. But the amazing thing about this scripture is that the words themselves weren't enough to quell their fears, even though they came from Jesus. Even the words of Jesus didn't quell their fears with their being overwhelmed of thinking that they were seeing a ghost. I think it's kind of similar to today. So much has changed in our lives so quickly, and there's been so much fear in our society now. It's been so induced that I bet that either you or someone you know close to you has been or is now gripped in fear. And even perhaps rock-solid words of truth, no matter how well-spoken, no matter the verbal evidence, those words are often not enough right now to quell those fears. Anybody have or know somebody that way that is so afraid that no matter what the facts are, no matter how you say it or how, how it's being interpreted, they just can't hear it. They're just going to be afraid right now. Fear brings out ghosts and apparitions in our hearts and sometimes even before our eyes. And if the fear is great enough, we might even get caught in believing that those ghosts are truly real. And even one day, even if you do come across an apparition that seems to be a real ghost, even then, why should we fear? Since our Lord is Lord of all and King of kings, and Lord and King and creator of all that is material and all that is spirit, even if there were such a thing as a ghost and even if we did come across one, why should we, God's people of faith, have any fear? Remember the very first words of Christ today, peace be with you. And Jesus says to the disciples, that's the very next thing, why are you frightened? And then he says, and why do doubts still arise in your hearts? I love the juxtaposition of these two. This, this reminds us, and you've heard before in sermons, how in the Bible, the opposite of fear is not undying courage, but the opposite of fear actually is faith. So it makes sense. Why are you frightened? Why do doubts still arise? The doubts go with the fright, and that the lack of faith is what goes with the fear. And the dissolving of fear is through the faith and believing. But the words weren't enough for the disciples. And so Jesus goes ahead and says, look, look, look at my hands and my feet. He shows them his very body. And then the very next part, and it's, it's about a fish. And, um, you know, some of us here like to go fishing too, but what's the point of the fish in the story here? And I think, although this sounds like a joke, I think it's to make sure for the disciples there's nothing fishy going on. In other words, that Jesus really is real and true. I mean, why else is this kind of mundane thing said that comes next? You know, it's, it's while in their joy they were still disbelieving and wondering, he said to them, have you anything to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he ate it 
in their presence. Why even have that in there? You know, we have some big, huge stuff in Scripture, right? And, and part of this gospel is some big, huge stuff too. Have, he ate a piece of fish. Okay. But it shows he is no apparition. And those little things sometimes for us do matter when we're so flooded with our fears, when we're flooded of fear of those ghosts, those apparitions in our lives that we have a hard time even thinking straight. Sometimes the words themselves, even from Jesus, appear to not be enough. Sometimes we need to see his hands and his feet and to know that he is real and with us. And this is just what our Lord does today for the disciples. And it is that point that he opens their minds to the scripture, it says, so they could see these things he was talking about, that it was written that the Messiah was to suffer and then to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And then he says to the disciples, you are my witnesses. To these things. We are called to speak out, to speak about Christ. But sometimes in our fears and in the fears of the world now, the words just don't seem to be enough. We are called to also show the world the very hands and feet of Christ. And as Pastor Bonnie recently mentioned in one of her sermons, we are called to be, as the gathered people of God, to be the very hands and feet of Christ. The good news for us is that Jesus speaks to us and says to us as well, peace be with you. The words of Christ come to us and bring us peace to chase away the ghosts of our fears and to bring us back to faith, back to believing. And in our doubting, especially in the very scary and uncertain times, the good news is that Christ shows us His hands and His feet, His very body, in the Holy Communion, in our baptisms, here in worship, and out in the world, bringing us back to faith, fed and nourished, to be those witnesses to all nations, just the way our Lord has called us to be. And this is our gift, to be able to do that. He brings us those words of peace. And he brings us his very hands and feet, his body, so that we then in turn can be that gift to others. So in thanksgiving and in love, let us step out in courage and with faith, the kind of faith that comes from our Lord, to speak his words of peace and to be his hands and his feet, living, physical, faith-filled witnesses proclaiming his good news to all nations. Amen. And now may we also share in those words that Jesus said to his disciples, peace be with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace together. Peace be with you. God's peace be with you. Peace be with you. God's peace be with you. Peace be with you. God's peace be with you. And now with one voice we share in the words of our faith, the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, the Almighty and all-powerful Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's one and only Son, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. I believe Jesus suffered at the hands of Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. Three days later, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, where he is seated at the right hand of God the Father. 
and one day he will return to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Father, we serve such a glorious and wonderful and loving God. We've gathered here tonight to give you worship with our hearts and with our lives and to lift our voices to you in praise. And we thank you that you are here with us and among us tonight. And we continue to say as one body, to you be the glory, our God, to you be the glory. And we pray together tonight the prayer that you taught us in Scripture. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I worship you. 